welcome to another informative half hour on NAFDAQ and your health. This is where you get the most authentic information on how NAFDAQ is fighting daily to safeguard the health of the nation. My name is Tosi Omolaja and today we shift focus to micronutrients. Micronutrients are nutrients that are required in the body in small quantities. They are vitamins and they are minerals and amino acids that are required for development and growth of humans. And when we don't have them in sufficient quantity in food that you consume, it leads to what we call malnutrition. Malnutrition is a condition that results from eating a diet that lacks one or more nutrients. It could also be as a result of having either not enough or too much essential nutrients like calories, protein, carbohydrates, vitamins or minerals such that the diet causes health problems. Malnutrition does not only refer to not getting enough food. Sometimes if you get too much of a particular food, it's malnutrition. Then we also have micronutrient malnutrition, where you don't get enough uh, micronutrients. But the one that is of serious public health concern currently, do you understand? And that is the area of um, micronutrient malnutrition. The deficiency results of what we call hidden hunger. For instance, when you lack the vitamin A in your body, which you require in very minute quantity, it affects your sight. So this hidden hunger shows you are not physically hungry, but your body, your cells, your organs are hungry for these micro, micronutrients. They are required daily, but in a very minute quantities. That is why they are so important. And the lack of them will result to scurvy for the vitamin D. They will result to uh, many diseases in the body. According to UNICEF, Malnutrition is a direct and underlying cause of 45% of all deaths of children under 5. An estimated 2 million children suffer from severe acute malnutrition, and 7% of women of childbearing age also suffer from acute malnutrition. Malnutrition leads to a lot of problems, okay, which includes poor development. In children, it can even lead to death. In pregnant mothers, um, it, is, it causes problems in the sense that um, there are other health complications that could arise, you know, when you don't have adequate nutrition during your pregnancy. It also leads to stunting and unfortunately Nigeria is rated as the second highest nation with children that are stunted. And then also poor cognitive development, you know, the child will not be able to reason properly and then you have issues and then we could also have frequent illnesses, you know, and uh, so these are some of the things that malnutrition can cause. This health conundrum has now become a national emergency and calls for concerted effort if we must turn around the tide of malnutrition and micronutrients deficiency in Nigeria. There is a long list of essential micronutrients for the wholesome growth and development of the human body. In Nigeria, however, Certain micronutrients have been found to be critically needed as they are in very minute supply in our foods. All of them are of interest, but the ones of major concern are actually three of them. Okay, These are vitamin A, iron, and iodine. These micronutrients are very important in the, in the sense that, for instance, vitamin A is useful for good sight. Deficiency of vitamin A leads to poor development of children and can even lead to sometimes fatal consequences. Iodine deficiency leads to goiter, you know, when you have the glands uh, swollen up. And then, of course, iron deficiency leads to anemia, you know, and um, these are various conditions that could now, you know, lead into other complications if adequate care is not taken. A number of food vehicles have been mandated to carry specific micronutrients in order to bridge the deficiency gap in Nigeria. This has been tackled, you know, by the federal government through the Federal Ministry of Health and uh, NAMDAC is the lead agency in this regard, you know, and um, what we are doing 
is that in collaboration with other government agencies, there are certain food vehicles that have been selected, you know, uh, with support of WHO and US, uh, UNICEF, you know, uh, to deliver micronutrients to the vulnerable population, okay? And what do we mean by the vulnerable population? These are children, pregnant women and the elderly, you know, and especially people who are in the rural areas. What do you mean by fortified food? Because naturally, um, we found out that our starchy food, proteinous food, fats and oil are not sufficient when broken down in the body to deliver these micronutrients. We have identified some vehicles that could be used. We call them food vehicles. And what are these food vehicles? There are some staple foods that have been identified in our diet in Nigeria that could be used to transport these micronutrients into our food and it will now provide the availability of the necessary vitamins and minerals in the food. What are these um, food vehicles? We have sugar, wheat, fat and oil. They are actually mandatorily supposed to be fortified with vitamin A to improve eyesight especially and brain formation in children. Then we also have salt that carries minerals and what's the minerals? It's iodine and that's why we say salt iodization. These are items that most of the population consume. Okay, a lot of people take salt, a lot of people take um, bread, flour and things that are made from flour. Uh, things like pasta is made from flour, bread is made from flour, so many things are made from flour. Everybody takes salt. Then we have um, vegetable oil. Quite a number of people take vegetable oil. So you must fortify the vegetable oil with vitamin A so that when people are taking vegetable oil, somehow you are getting the micronutrients that you've missed out in so many other um, food items that you've been taking. There is a level that is required to be dosed in the production process so that whenever somebody is eating, you don't need to go and look for these micronutrients you are already taking them when you are consuming the food. And this, this system is called food fortification and it's composed. NAFDAC, as an agency of government saddled with the responsibility of safeguarding the health of the nation, ensures that the selected food vehicles are fortified and at the specified levels. For instance, vitamin A, which is mandatory in sugar, should be 25,000 international units or IU per kg. In wheat, vitamin A must be 6,000 IU per kg. Vegetable oil must carry 20,000 IU of vitamins per kg and between 26 and 33,000 IU per kg in margarine and butter. For salt, the required concentration for iodine fortification is um, 50 parts per million at the factory, okay? Iodine must be added, but because iodine is something that is volatile, you can lose some of it as, you know, as time goes by. At the market level, when we check, it should not be below 30 parts per million. Labeling is an important requirement for producers of regulated products. It's even more important for food vehicles, as this allows the consumer make informed buying choices. We have food fortification regulations, we also have vitamin A fortification regulation to ensure that once these minerals and vitamins are in food, they are declared on the packaging of the product. There are set requirements for any food that has micronutrients in them. They should be labelled properly according to the pre-packaged labelling regulation and the quantity must be declared. Before any regulated product that falls under the food vehicles category is allowed to be registered, given a NAFDAQ registration number and thereafter produced for public consumption, NAFDAQ subjects them to rigorous analysis and checks in its state-of-the-art ISO 9001 certified labs to ensure compliance. In Nigeria, we have mandatory fortification of uh, food, some food vehicles with vitamins, for example, wheat flour, vegetable oil, sugar, and margarine. With these instruments, we've been able to analyze a lot of samples with vit for vitamin A in flour, in vegetable oil, and in margarine. 
And also with this instrument, we have been able to analyze some water-soluble vitamins, vitamin B1, B2, nicotinamide, vitamin B6, using this instrument. Another important thing we also consider is it's not just putting it that is important. There is something we call um, bioavailability. Those things must be able to get into your blood system when you take it through the food. There are certain forms you could add and your body will not even be able to absorb it. So we also check to make sure that what is added is the, will be added in such a way that it will be ab absorbable by the body. Do you understand? So that the micronutrients can go into the system and do what they're supposed to do you know, in, our, in our various bodies. NAFDAC, as a matter of priority, monitors food sold in Nigerian markets to ensure compliance. We go out to monitor. We actually do periodic monitoring of these facilities, both at the level of manufacture. That means we visit factories in our normal GMP assessments and we look at um, their process of uh, fortification, their, um, their own internal monitoring. We also go to the markets and check through the distribution channels. We draw samples and test. Sometimes we have, a, we have a certain, instrument, uh, certain equipment we take to the field, uh, which is called eye check. We take it to the field. Uh, we can use it to detect vitamin A, iron, you know, and even um, um, you know, other things. So we take it to the field and we use it to check on the spot there in the field test vegetable oil, test to see whether there is uh, vitamin A and some of the other ingredients. So we do that uh, field check. In addition to that, we also draw samples from the field and take to our laboratory for more detailed check to see that, um, to back, I mean, like a confirmatory test to see that what we did in the field, you know, is the same with um, what we're getting in the lab. So we do that to ensure that the, fortific the fortificants are actually at the levels they are supposed to be. We also go to the villages, the local governments. We go into the markets at the local governments to even take samples to make sure that the rural population are also getting what we expect them to get in terms of the fortification, I mean the fortificants that are supposed to be in the food and at what levels they are supposed to be there. You are not to sell any food that is not fortified. If that food is one of the food vehicles. For instance, you cannot sell unfortified sugar, and you that produce it, or you that display it for sale, or you that sells it, will face regulatory sanctions. You're watching NAFDAQ and your health. We'll go on a short break now. You're welcome back. Because of the importance of this health malaise, NAFDAQ does not rest on its oars or just limits its role to pre-registration laboratory analysis and post-market surveillance of relevant regulated products. The agency also goes the extra mile to educate and inform stakeholders and indeed the public on the importance of fortifying their identified food vehicles. We need to have the public buy in into what we are doing and that by letting them understand the need that the consumption of foods which are adequately fortified with micronutrients are very essential for optimal health. At periodic meetings such as the National Fortification Alliance, the agency conferences with other agencies and stakeholders to review progress, identify challenges and chart new pathways for the attainment of a well-nourished Nigerian populace. We should work with the consumer in mind. At the end of the day, we want to make sure that what we do has positive impact for those at the end of the line who rely on us to discharge our responsibilities with the utmost sincerity and noting that small steps that we take have great impact within this country. Malnutrition and micronutrients deficiency takes the most toll on maternal health and infants. Therefore, NAFDAQ encourages pregnant women and nursing mothers to take breastfeeding very seriously. The first 1,000 days matters. And it's important that the infant gets very, very good uh, nutrition during this period. 
uh, what we expect or what the, um, that, is a, that is something we call the breast milk substitutes, I mean BMS code, breast milk substitutes code. What WHO is promoting is that every child that is born should have exclusive breast breastfeeding for the first six months of life. And when we say exclusive, no water, no sugar, no salt. Do you understand? Exclusive. Everything that the baby needs is in the mother's milk. And if you give enough, if you breastfeed enough, um, your baby will come out, you know, very, I mean, very well. NAFDAC took advantage of the World Breastfeeding Week to further sensitize women, nursing mothers and stakeholders on the importance of optimal breastfeeding practice to the nourishment and wholesome growth of infants. Why we relate it to national economic development is because when you breastfeed your child, your child has access to optimal, optimal nutrition, good nutrition, at that beginning stage of life, when the brain is forming, when everything is developing. So at that time, if you provide adequate nutrition, you have people who develop very well intellectually and they, you know, they can actually progress in life. The ripple effects of non-compliance with this most crucial national health issue cannot be quantified or overemphasized. It reaches to the very core of our national growth and development. The cost of not taking good food or not fortifying your, the food is much more than what it costs to fortify the food. And what do I mean by this? When people start to fall ill, they spend a lot of money in the hospital, then lost time, productive time, because even if it's a child, a, I mean, a father or a mother would have to leave work to go and stay to, with the child or take the child to the hospital. Productivity is lost in that place because you've left what you're doing to go and attend to a sick child and all that. Then, in addition to that, when a child is developing and there's poor cognitive development, that child becomes a problem, learning becomes difficult, you know, and then it becomes a challenge. And then, what kind of resources do you want to have to drive your, to drive your country or to drive the country if you keep having people with, I mean, stunted people, you know, stunted children, they will also grow to, to become adults, but they have poor cognitive cap capabilities. Do you understand? So it would, the consequences are lots, 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 a lot more. Do you understand? So that is why we insist and we encourage all people that are manufacturing items that are supposed to be fortified, the food items that are supposed to be fortified, should please fortify them and ensure that the fortifications are at the levels that they should be. A much more complex cultural issue that contributes to the deficiency problem is the preference for imported foods. This is a culture that must change if we must eradicate the problems of malnutrition and micronutrients deficiency in Nigeria. It will do good for Nigerians to demand for foods, these food, staple foods that are fortified. You know there's something peculiar with Nigerians. We love imported food. There's nothing wrong with imported food. But unfortunately, these fortified food, if they are imported, might, and especially if they are smuggled, might not be fortified. So our children, even the supposed rich children, people from wealthy backgrounds, may be lacking out in nutrients. Because over there, they might not have that challenge of um, malnourishment. But it's peculiar in sub-Sahara Africa and in Nigeria in particular. We had serious challenges before the borders were closed, in the sense that a lot of unfortified items that are supposed to be mandatorily fortified were being smuggled into the country. You know, so one of the benefits of the border closure also is that there is reduced influx of unfortified food. So meaning that the population that should get fortified food will now be able to get food that is made in Nigeria for us or imported for us through the normal channel and we have checked and we know that these foods have what they, they contain what they should contain and then our people can consume. As a people, we also have a responsibility to be aware and protect our health and that of our children by eating balanced diets and ensuring that we buy only fortified vegetable oil, flour, margarine or butter, sugar 
and salt. Nigerians should demand for fortified food. We should demand to eat only for the, when you want to buy sugar and you see that the sign of, I mean, it doesn't contain, it does, it's not fortified with vitamin A, they don't buy it. Whoever brings that sugar will not bring it again because you wouldn't be able to sell. Or you find flour or vegetable oil or margarine or butter that doesn't have the, uh, the uh, fortification or the micronutrients that should be there, don't buy it. In addition, we also encourage that the public patronize adequately packaged foods. And the reason is because uh, fortified foods that are exposed, you know, uh, there are bags, for example, bags of wheat flour is opened and then the people begin to dispense them, dispense them in basins and in cups. You find out that the elements have effect on them and oftentimes these uh, micronutrients are lost, you know, because they are very susceptible to um, degradation by light, by heat, and so proper handling is so very important. So uh, people who sell also need to have that understanding. NAFDAQ reiterates its commitment to being customer-focused. The management and staff of NAFDAQ joined the rest of the world in marking the Customer Service Week 2019. The week was another opportunity for the agency to continue its reorientation program aimed at recalibrating the agency's culture and reposition it, indeed, into a customer-focused organization. The Director General of NAFDAQ, Professor Mojisola Adeyeye, since inception of duty as NAFDAQ head, had begun a total customer service and operations overhaul, which was encapsulated in the mantra, customer-focused, agency-minded. If you are customer focused and you are agency minded, you are thinking not about yourself, not about what is going to your pocket. You are thinking of the customers, you are thinking of the agency, you are thinking of the country. You are actually thinking of people, including NAVDAC people, because we use medicines, we drink water, we eat food. NAVDAC Yada project intensifies campaign against drug abuse. The NAFDAQ Youth Against Drug Abuse Yada project is a national campaign targeted at young people and youths in Nigeria. The project is a nationwide campaign against drug abuse in secondary schools under the aegis of NAFDAQ and implemented in collaboration with the Pharmaceutical Society of Nigeria Young Pharmacist Group. Recently, the group took its campaign to secondary schools in Oshun and Anambra states. At Elisha Oshun State, the team reached out to students at Elisha Grammar School, where students were taught drug abuse prevention skills. The Yada train also made a stop at Orient Special Schools, Ogbonike Anambra State, where the students were sensitized about the dangers of drug abuse. That's it on NAVDAC Update. You've been updated. That's how far we can go on today's edition of the program, NAFTAC and Your Health. Join us same time, same station next week for another insightful edition. Remember, safeguarding the health of the nation is our collective responsibility. So report fake and unwholesome food and drugs and activities that create them in your area. If you have questions, comments or inquiries, we'd like to hear from you. Till next week, stay safe.